Hello, everyone, and welcome again to another segment with me and Mark. That we're going to be going over keeping up with event trends. Uh, today, we're going to tackle the, the the question that's on everybody's mind is uh, safety. And as we open up in certain cities and are closed in others, what are people doing? Um, uh, if you guys are just tuning in or you're just becoming aware of Northwest Event Show, and Northwest Event Show is where event professionals like us meet, uh, where we can ideate, get the latest news, and uh, basically talk about what's next. Um, so I'd like to welcome Mark uh, Cantuno to the stage now. Um, come on in, Mark. Hey, Jackie. How are you? Hey, everyone. Hi, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, so... Yeah, I basically, I know that you went to Vegas recently and um, before, in case somebody missed the last show, do you want to just give a quick intro on yourself and your uh, company? Absolutely. Um, my name is Mark Cattuno. I am the owner of MC Event Consulting. I'm also the owner of MC Travel Management. We are a event firm and travel company that helps put on trade shows, conferences, um, incentive events, destination projects. Um, and we truly love um, how we've recently pivoted with putting on virtual events in our avatar platform. Um, and so, you know, we are trying to stay busy and hopeful as of this changing industry. Definitely. And yeah, tell us, I mean, I know when we talked last, you were going to go to Vegas and you guys were um, going to hit up a couple, several like hotels and just kind of see the vibe because they are open there. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your trip? Absolutely. So we actually live streamed last time from the Bellagio, um, if you guys remember. Um, and Vegas was really an interesting staying domestic um, and in the U.S. was very interesting. We visited um, the Bellagio. We went to also Caesars. Um, the safety precautions, I would say, were truly amazing and was really interesting to see how each hotel sets themselves apart, but also how, you know, they're really getting ready for us to, you know, move our industry forward. Um, I would say what was really more interesting was the restaurants and also activities. So some of the different things that we also did was um, trying out different restaurants, eating outside, eating indoors. Um, restaurants now, at, at the time we were there, everything had to be pre-reserved. So you just couldn't walk in. Um, they're using open table for a lot of you know their continuing um, reservation process. Um, but what was really interesting to us was uh, visiting the Cosmopolitan, had an ice skating rink that they still kept open. Um, so that was a lot of fun to be on a rooftop, to be, you know, we did a table service there. So we had our own private table. And so that was kind of fun to be able to, you know, gauge um, separation and knowing you had your own private space. The, our mindset for it was really doing things the right way and also how to protect myself and my team. Um, one of the cool things that we did was ensuring a lot of the places we looked at their precautions. So most of the places um, do have listed online what their plans are. We wanted to make sure everyone was following mask policies. So that was definitely front of mind for us. Um, and I think what was really, really cool, um, and for me really put a smile on my face, was visiting Stadium Swim by um, Circa, was the largest pool in Las Vegas, heated in the winter time, um, okay. and not many people there, but it was definitely very exciting to be in a brand new facility and knowing what our future moving forward is to work with a facility like that. Definitely. Yeah. And I actually, fo I followed not too much later because it was my mom's 70th birthday. So we, I was actually there like right after you. Um, and I did get to go to a couple of, of entertaining places, but tell me, tell me more about the safety protocols that, that, uh, some of these, like, uh, I know you went to a place that had the experience. Was it Area 15? Is that correct? Yep. So um, it was really cool to see what an indoor facility was. And I think that yeah. was something was really interesting. So um, they have everyone stand outside. Um, they're precautioning how many people they're letting in at a time. Um, there's multiple hand washing station, uh, you know, hand sanitizing stations there. Um, and what was really interesting is when they let you into this room, which is a 3D dimensional projector room, they set you up on couches separated from everyone. So your group stays together. Um, you're able to have your own cocktail waitress that's serving you. 
And, you know, the whole room was designed as, you know, a lounge style, but spread out in a way that they knew they could only max capacity at a certain number. And you felt comfortable that you were in your own space. And I think that's some of, you know, the trends moving forward that we're going to, you know, create more of these VIP loungy spaces. So, you know, it is spread out in a way for us to be able to social distance and also for us to be able to, you know, know that, you know, you're far enough from other people. I think what, you know, some other crowds that we were watching was, is the spaces were so small. And if they were a bigger group, then your group does have to split. And I think that's something where you know what size group you're going with so that, you know, what your typical space would occupy at that time. And then how, ma how many people were allowed in your group in that experience? I would say it was like, um, four to five fit on the couches that we were in our area. Um, it definitely was not big. It was very more intimate. Um, I would say in the whole activational room, it was a lower occupancy number at the time. But if I was to say the whole room actually only had, you know, 20 people, that was a lot. Um, it was a very intimate, more event. Um, it definitely was not overcrowding. Um, and it was a really cool projector space. We definitely see, you know, the future of you working with them and their space and putting fashion shows on and really doing some creative projector mapping. Like to have a space that's 360 projector mapping in Las Vegas, we see endless future of being able to put on such creative events there. Yeah, no, I I agree with that. And uh, like yeah. I said, I, I followed after, but we only did like the Neon Museum, which was- So that was actually my next question. So mm -hmm. how did you feel the Neon Museum? We felt it was really comfortable and safe and they were really, you know, their targets on the floor of spreading people out. What were your thoughts after hearing from us? What were your thoughts on the Neon Museum? I think from the beginning, they did a good job because, <clears throat> pardon me, because they you had to schedule the time to come in. Um, it was a very small group that we had and everybody had to wear their masks. Of course, you were tested in the in the you know, you, your your temperature was taken in the beginning of, of the whole tour. And they just were very adamant about do not take off your mask. If you do take off your mask, you will be, you know, exited from the guided tour. So it's no longer you can explore the space on your own. The, the guy takes you and walks you, which is a little bit different than what it used to be, where you could just walk around and see the signs. But it was kind of cool because we got the history of all the signs that, you know, were like the, you know, the big ones. And um, we felt safe, which was the biggest thing um, out of out of that experience. And I felt safe, too, when we were at the restaurants and even <clears throat> when we did have five people um, most of the restaurants for us that we went to had like a four person minimum. Oh. So we did have to stay in like two, uh, two different tables when we did go out to dinner uh, that, that night. In fact. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so exciting to hear you follow up after us. So it was, <laughs> So much fun to be able to bring that back to the table. Um, as you mentioned, yes, I did journey on um, for the new year. Um, 2020 came and we knew we had to continue journeying. And um, fortunate enough, we actually went to the Bahamas. Um, yes, the, yes, yes, yes. Tell us about that. So um, the Search Foundation had their board of directors retreat in the Bahamas. I know they're a huge partner in love um, of Northwest Event Show. And um, Atlantis wanted to host us. And we were their very first group. Um, which which wow. is an exciting um, opportunity at coming as an event professional and also, you know, coming from a health and safety risk person. Um, I wanted to spearhead that. I wanted to feel what my clients would feel. And also, you know, we are still looking at some of our other international programming for 2021 is still in person in Q4. So I wanted to see what does that actually realistically look like. So um, the board of directors and leadership by Kate Pate with Pate Consulting, um, you know, really um, spearheaded it working with the Atlantis. It was a phenomenal um, success of us, you know, flying out there. Yeah. I would say the Bahamas was literally safer than the United States. Um, and not to joke, their drivers are getting tested every five days. Their hotel staff is getting tested every five days. To even get onto the island, you needed a test before five days and submit for a visa. They're one of the only countries that are actually having you get a visa, which is actually your insurance policy. So if you actually work right. now with COVID, now you have an insurance policy that would actually pay for your COVID stay. Um, and I think that their leadership as a country and also what their, you know, hotel communication is so critical to want to bring people back. I've never seen, you know, the smell of Clorox is so enjoyable and being able to... <laughs> 
you know, know that temperature checks. I think one of the coolest experiences was anytime you stepped within a certain parameter of space within the Atlantis, you actually had to go through um, hand, hand sanitizing. So they wouldn't even let you in the door of restaurants and stuff until you sanitized your hands. And I just shows to their level of cleanliness of them really wanting to keep um, the resort safe. Um, I would say their casino, we had a lot of fun there and was um, truly enjoyable. Um, and you felt safe there also. They were wiping down um, the table, chips, um, you know, the chairs. Um, they only let three people play at a time. And I think that, you know, when we look at, you know, how does that, you know, people are asking a lot of, you know, how does this help us? How do we move forward from this information now? Right. What is the expectation that us as planners should expect from other places? Holding, you know, places like Atlanta such such the high standards of knowing what they lead as, as, as our industry. Now, how do we take that information and move other properties? And while we're going through negotiations with hotels, that we should be holding them also to that level. And I think that, you know, knowing safe locations to hold events is also something very critical. Uh, you know, there are people that want hybrid. There are people that want to be able to still meet. You know, the search meeting was a hybrid meeting. We had some people that could come in and fly, and then we had some that were at home, you yeah. know? And I think that that's an important part of this, being able to create successful hybrid meetings, but also knowing how your um, venue and location can move you forward. You know, you you want your venue to be a partner through this. And, you know, I would say that, you know, some of the other locations we have been looking at were not really available for the success of what they wanted to bring to the table. They had on-site COVID testing. They have literally a tower dedicated to host people if they were to get sick. You know, I'm in New York, so for I needed to come back. I needed a COVID test so I didn't have to quarantine for 14 days. I'm in, you know, my second to last day today, and I'm going to be actually to retesting tomorrow. But it actually made my trip much easier. And now, you know, with the new CDC guideline on the 26th, anybody coming back into the U.S., actually needs a test. And I think that also shows the leadership of us moving forward and having the correct protocol in place so that, you know, we don't have to scramble later on. You know, if everyone's now ready to have that test to get back into the U.S., then you feel your group is also safer. And I think, right. you know, coming as planners, our leadership comes from building that trust within our clients. Yeah, you brought up a very good point. So confidence, tell, tell me what your clients are kind of telling you right now for you know the upcoming q3 q4 uh, are you seeing anything in the books already do they have that confidence up um especially here domestically so i won't lie and say our domestic we have one project for q4 um it is in orlando um it is on right now it is a incentive program mm -hmm. um I can't, you know, say the client's name at this time confidentially, but um, our Q3 client actually is an international event. And we had a meeting and they are on. Um, they are on, more excited than being on. Um, they just want to get out of the country, celebrate, and, you know, know that we are going to take every effort to building a correct program for them. And, you know, you can ask, well, what does an international safe program look like? It's us yep. ensuring that even if the hotel or country is not asking for it, we're going to be requesting COVID testing. We're going to be, you know, creating these protocols for their guests to go through hoops, but it's the hoops to ensuring that everyone is in that group is safe. If that's doing daily temperature checks, app, um, you know, surveying every day, you know, going through the process to be able to know that you can gather, you know, creating those six feet, you know, barriers between people. How do we design, you know, intimate dinners, but spacing people people out correctly, you know, how to, you know, planning more stuff outside, like a beach dinner, and, you know, um, also being prepared for inclement weather if, you know, it was to change, you know, how do you, um, so, you know, our client and us sat down and started negotiating and talking about how do we change their program slightly to also make their group feel comfortable. And, you know, us being transparent with their group, you know, one of the big things that we were really about this group was, you know, we negotiated a very strong cancellation policy. And so, you know, if you were to unfeel, you know, that this isn't what you wanted to walk into, you know, we made it very easy for their guests of this program to cancel out. And I think that was something for me as leadership for us to have build that confidence in our client to say, hey, listen, we have some that want to come. We have some that not. This isn't a program particularly that we would do hybrid because it is incentive in-person program. But we wanted their 
attendees to know that we are backing you in every way to be able to get you there safely and get you back. We have been looking at, you know, emergency evac insurance. We're looking at, you know, different travel insurance partners um, that we use for our travel brand. So, you know, I would say that, you know, more of what's interesting is our domestic partners that are changing so rapidly and keeping up with them. Um, then rather the international that's been very forced forward is very interesting um, how, you know, they're approaching and slightly changing things um, where we feel our domestic partners are scrambling. And it's very interesting because we feel that, you know, they've been hybrid and are trying to open little by little, but, you know, they're not ready yet to take on larger groups of 200 we feel they're still, you know, working to design their venues to be able to space out correctly for those numbers. Yeah, that's the thing, you know, planning domestically, especially after hearing what the Bahamas is doing, I feel like, you know, even when I did travel to Mexico, we went to Rosarito, which is right below California. I mean, they even down there, you know, they were taking your temperature at every, every restaurant. They were doing the piece where they would hand you the hand sanitizer and you know, it's just different traveling um, to a different country, but I think we can learn a lot. And obviously, you know, we won't get too much into it, but I think that moving on with the new administration that is going to have definitely an impact on that. Um, what I did want to ask you about was the, the vaccine, right? So now we have the vaccine in place. What are you seeing? Because um, I know you do a lot, a lot of research and a lot of play into that live events. What are you seeing that that that's changing um, in, in the sense of you know the rapid testing and all these other pieces that you have in place? Yeah, I, we're seeing a lot of is we are seeing the ticket increase for Q three. And we're starting to see that a lot of stuff is actually starting to get advertised and on schedule. Um, and what's interesting about that is we are looking at, you know, by that time we see a heavy number of people that are going to probably be vaccinated at that point. But we also can see that there's going to be such a surplus of additional testing that even if you have the vaccine and can show proof of it, that I still think up to the end of this year that they're still going to require for you to go through testing. And I think that that's a two-way confidence. That's confidence of knowing that particular event. Every single person had to be tested to create that bubble and knowing what's entering into that facility. And I think that's, you know, to compare that to the Bahamas and the Atlantis, that's what people are looking for. If I was to buy a ticket right now to a concert, I want to know that everybody in that facility went through the same strenuous process to feel that level of safety. Right. Um, and I think that that's really what, you know, um, festivals are trying to work on right now. They're devising plans. Our company is actually trying to spearhead that with, um, we will be creating, um, it's in the process of actually being launched. Um, I'm happy to announce um, we are um, launching global event control is going to be tying into registration ticketing systems and to help you manage your COVID vaccine um, and right. testing. And, you know, working with systems like this are going to be able to allow for people and especially organizers to weed out people that don't want to follow instructions and to easily reject based on your internal policy of your event. Mm -hmm. To be able to have proof in one place to be able to say, you know, everything is here. This is all the same. You know, it's not holding a piece of paper anymore and just bringing it and going very digitized on to pre-screening you even before you come to the event is where we are looking at, you know, less of those issues, less issues at the gate and to be able to move you forward in a manner of, you know, creating that bubble on site. You know, we are hopeful to think that, you know, by you know, Q3 to four, that smaller intimate hybrid events are gonna be now starting to launch and then, yeah. you know, creating the redesign of what, you know, the newer event is gonna look like for starting January, 2022. And I know these numbers sound, you know, so far off of where our industry is, but I think that these are the conversations and also negotiations with your venues on, you know, are you going to be providing as Purell? What is, you know, any cost increases? Are you taking that on as the venue? These are your time now to really negotiate your mm -hmm. events and also, you know, your venues to be stepping up to really build that massive um, events to be able to move us forward. Um, I'm actually just um, reading one of the questions that came in, if you don't mind, Jackie. Oh, not at all. Yes, please. Um, Amy asked, how does ethics play into this? Do you feel morally responsible if someone at one of your event contracts and dies from COVID? Right. Um, 
so morally ethics as the planning company, you know, I definitely feel there is a morality to this. And also, you know, our duty of preparing a safe event um, in due diligence, I definitely would concur. And we are speaking with our own legal team in regards to, you know, wavering on, you know, people coming into an in-person event. Right now we're looking at, you know, people being able to have hybrid level of being able to be at home um, and their option of being able to gather in person. Right. Uh, Duty of care is something that we like to say, and you know, you will hear in the health side of being able to, you know, utmost of you know responsibility. Uh, and within duty of care is you know us preparing and doing everything in our best effort. So pre-testing, temperature checking. Um, you know, I would definitely say that what a lot of what we're seeing in regards of duty of care there is a higher level of expectation moving forward of what that duty of care looks like. Right. Um, not to say that we want to hold unsafe events, but I think that there's a level of also the organizer on, you know, their feeling their audience is ready to gather again, I think is another parameter of this. We've been talking with other clients that strictly want to go hybrid uh, virtual for the next two years and are not oh. looking to have anything on the books. I hope that answers your question, Amy. Yeah. And I mean, for, for the clients that are, you know, willing to, to take that, that, that moral step, I guess, you know, a, as an organization, um, us as planners, I mean, we, we have to do our due diligence, like you said, to ensure that they are safe. Um, and that's why I think that it's, it's nice that we are getting looked at as planners, more of as, as essential workers, because, <clears throat> I think we are, you know, it, if if there needs to be even a, um, a hybrid conference for a medical company, right? Who's going to be the one that's going to be in the forefront? Um, it's going to be us. And I think that the more that we dive into that and the more that, you know, this administration takes a look at us as essential workers, I think that will definitely help us, you know, to get the vaccine to, to, and it'll force us to also take a look at the CDC, you know, guidelines, take a look at your client's plan. If, if it's not safe, you could say, Hey, listen, I, I advise that this is probably not the best time to launch, but if you were to launch here are the parameters that we will have to go, go by. Um, now you mentioned something about your your registration system, um, how that ties in. I think that's also really really important. The technology that comes out of this time when we were incubated, when we you know had to stay at home, but like now that we're coming in, you know your registration can't just be do you want to attend this event? It's 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 about the testing, like you said submitting and then and then determining hey listen you came back positive right in your test so we're going to go ahead and turn you into a virtual experience instead of an in person so tell us a little bit about that i'm i'm excited to hear that yeah so global event control is a passion of mc event consulting's project of wanting to create a um, it started with the brain of HR management on being able to have one place for all your event staffing um, an education place for people to learn safety tips and tricks and everything that you want somebody to know about your event and expand it into us now having a place where we're going to be tying into pretty much every registration platform will dump into us and then we will start, you know, the COVID process of collecting their information, uploading test results, and then being able to push that out to either external on-site badge printing companies. Um, and, you know, you set the forward of where you want that information to go after. But we will be having a way for reports to be created for anybody that does test positive. And so that, you know, we will be able to then notify the um, team to then mark those regs um, for change to virtual. And I think that this is, you know, the start of us being able to create the right tools. And as this is being made by an actual event company and that, you know, actually puts on events, you know, our heart is in the place of, you know, what tools do we want to be able to move our clients forward? And, you know, it's really cool and innovative of how, you know, the design process is we should be to launch by around. Um, July, um, we will be starting beta testing and working with some companies to, you know, bring this to market. And I think that this is really a way for our industry to help our clients move forward. 
you know, I would personally advise that, you know, we want to make sure that we're not just putting on events um, to go what to Amy's saying, the morality of us as planners. Yes, we want to get back to work, but I think that there's a side to lean on what is safe. And so, you know, um, I personally have been taking classes on COVID compliance officer and COVID-19 and educating yourself enough to make that right choice and knowing, are you prepared to go back to work and, you know, how to do it safely? You know, if that's educating right. your client to go and say, hey, this program can be done virtually, you know, there's amazing uh, virtual platforms. And um, I think this is a great yeah. time to even talk about what we're doing a little bit on you oh, know, yeah. our um, avatar system. So we've teamed up and launched as of April of last year our move was to, you know, have us go into an avatar world and, you know, being um, an actual figure in our world and being able to, you know, manipulate our world and create a real life video gaming experience or 360 audio. It is an application that you download onto your computer. You can actually use it on iOS. It works on Mac, PC, um, and iPhone, Android. And what's really cool about this is the interactiveness of being able to brand t-shirts virtually, be able to have exhibitors, you know, um, foster what they're looking for. We can have a virtual blimp go through your event. You know, we can have private offices made. And this is allowing us to have critical conferences that need to actually meet. Um, and we've been actually expanding this more in the virtual world. Um, and what's really cool about this is um, being able to foster the way of, you know, saying, hey, you know, what's really, you know, interesting about in person, let's take that virtual. And then there's our way of saying, you know, um, different branding opportunities. Um, and I think what's interesting more is for our way to also have different team building activities in different rooms. So, you know, we can have our main amphitheater, we can have our trade show floor, you know, we can have escape rooms, we can have gymnasiums. Um, we can, we even have a lounge built in that's our networking space with actual old school board games where people can play games and talk at the same time. And we really feel that this is our way to be able to have people gather. Um, we look at this in the future of how we ingrate this to hybrid, but this is, you know, one of our biggest market launches that actually have been really adaptive and critically needs to meet is our medical division. And it's been so important to have people in the medical facility, um, actually gather um and jack do you want to just stop for one question actually came in um which i'd love to take this question right now yes. um laura says we have a specialty tabletop dish and decor no furniture rental company i'm most interested mostly hearing that disposable dishware in direction of all events is going days and high-end places may not come back what are you seeing in the u.s we're holding on trying not to be discouraged um so Laura, what I will tell you personally and everywhere that we have been currently, um, nothing is disposable. Everything is still being served on dishes. What I will say is I think if people will still be keeping to regular dishes, your numbers might be doubled. And what I mean by that is if a dish has been touched in any way and you might be consuming through more than what an average event typically would in the past. And right. also, especially in glassware, where maybe somebody would just say, hey, just refill the same glass, that will not be held to standards anymore. Right. Um, I would definitely say that, you know, every piece of our industry, I think, is going to come back in a different way. I'm definitely not encouraging for you guys to start producing or sourcing in, you know, different paper goods and stuff. But maybe, you know, if you were to have a small piece of that or, you know, have the right connections or what sets you guys apart differently and how do you market yourselves, you know, is that, you know, being a part of, you know, a hotel that, you know, is showcasing different pieces of you guys um, in theirs. You know, it's always interesting to me when I'm in doing venue walkthroughs and some of the pieces aren't their own collection and it just sparks your brain to say, hey, you know, that's a great piece. Where is that from? Um, but I definitely think that, you know, it's even more sanitary and also the look of the event. We don't want to, you know, go backwards where, you know, we want to still feel green. I think that is a, a key importance of our industry, how the effort we took to make our industry more green with mobile apps and, you know, facilities getting the green seal and 
I think that there's a level of wanting to keep that realness. I especially think for specialty events and destination that, you know, I'm expected to be plated on a, you know, if a four course or five course meal on an actual dishware with gorgeous glasses around it. Um, and I hope that, you know, encourages you to stay positive and strong and please reach out to me if you need any other advice. Yeah. And I think, I think that there's that portion of it. Um, I do think there will be, and, and this is what I'm hearing is it's, it's like a grab and go situation, but that's not going to affect the type of events that you're talking about where you would have traditional glassware and, and tableware. And like you said, you know, if, you know, 10%, if you order 10% above um, what you normally do for a regular event before COVID now, you know, you're probably, like you said, going to double it because if anybody touches it or, or anything like that, you're, you're going to have to replace that plate. Um, now what? I do think the grab and go is going to be a, a thing um, might not be the, you know, over overarching piece for all events, but like, especially with like uh, festivals and things like that, sure. where, you know, normally you would grab your plate and 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 have that interaction. Um, now it's just going to be like, okay, well, you order your orders at the end of the table, just grab and go, right? So this is going to be. I think that. I mean, for me, I never was a big. Um, I never loved grab and go because it, it was not as ever as fresh. But I think that would be something to to kind of focus on um, if you are doing the grab and go. Well, I think one of the biggest things, and especially with grab and go and also creative design with that and, you know, creating cool bamboo, you know, and using, you know, other sources. Right. But I think what really is going to be setting apart is, you know, um, the buffets are going to be going away unless they're fully staffed. Exactly. Um, and I think that, you know, how the sanitary of um, plated seating meals are going to work is, you know, having, you know, metal covers over it being, you know, um, put down in certain ways, certain courses are going to be um, more um, pre put out before than the presentation of, you know, taking more dishes away. So I think the flow of how the dishes and stuff are served, I'm not yeah. in the catering business, so I will not, you know, personally put my mark on that. And, you know, maybe that'll be fun to actually bring a third person in next time. And we, yeah. um, I can bring in some of my friends that specialize on that. And I think that that would add some fun to the conversation. And um, I think, you know, it would be interesting to hear what their game plan is. I think that's important for us, you know, as planners to see, you know, what are they coming up with? And, you know, telling us how, what direction, you know, how to move um, would be also interesting. Yeah, let's do it. Um, let's do it for our February session. I'd love to bring awesome. somebody on. And, and if you guys don't know, we do have a resource guide that we have online um, that you guys can can visit. Um, with there, you know, we, we have the vendors that have come to our shows in the past and, and that the vendors that we're also and suppliers that we're also continuing the conversation with that are doing virtual events. But we do have some great catering companies here and, and you have some great catering, um, you know, companies as well uh, as far as, you know, your connection. So I think definitely hearing from them and, and that voice, I, I think would be great. I would I would love to have them. Well, thank you, Lara, for just uh, opening up such yeah. a fun conversation. Um, <laughs> and I think that, you know, our message of moving forward and, you know, experimenting and, you know, putting ourselves and our companies out there is, you know, how do we gather? I think the importance right. of this is knowing that, yeah, yeah, virtual is amazing and we are having a lot of fun with it too, but the connections that you meet, the bonds that you make and the efficiency of work that's actually done um, is truly so important to being able to, you know, move forward. That will never go away, everyone. It is so critically important for a business conferences. I've been fortunate enough from the age of 13, um, when I first got into this industry of going to my first business trade show and becoming a DJ. And I will <laughs> never, you know, forget, you know, that moment of just meeting and networking and, you know, growing to now being able to have a, you know, international company and being able to put on events is truly remarkable of me and my team to be able to just service such different industries and bring people together. You know, I think one of the most key efforts of this is keeping your clients also positive because they're in a very dark space also. They're losing people left and right. They're, you know, and being that shoulder for them and creating different plans and efforts. And they're very lost. 
I've had some clients that just always had a vision and it's now more for us to present the different options on how do they move forward. And honestly, groups like this and podcasts um, is so important to keep up on education, different tips and collaborating within our industry because we all share a different skill, a different talent, how we yeah. look at things so differently is something where you know, I feel it was very in the past of not doing that and being so solo. And if I have to say, one of the positive things is the reformication of being able to bring our industry forward and the actual people that are a part of it together and to be able to really solidify as one and stand up for ourselves is something really proud that I can say our industry has done. Um, would you do agree or disagree with that, Jackie? I would agree. And I think one of the biggest words that I heard, um, you know, as I'm talking to folks that are going to be speaking with us this month, um, obviously, we had our industry conversation um, this month as well on the 13th. And I think the biggest thing is innovation and just to continue to ideate. And, and we need to, as live events, we had the formula down. We knew what to do. We knew it was successful. We knew what worked. We just had to pick which one it was that we were going to implement with our client. Now in this virtual world, it's almost like we have to recreate the formula. A lot of us did a great job this last year of doing that and delivering um, very enticing content um, and, and moving our clients forward. But we're still not to the place where we've perfected it. And I think that as planners, we take that as a challenge and we want to perfect it. We want to make it better. We're always trying to elevate that and 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 show our clients that it can be better. It can, it can, it can have more of an impact. So I think ideate would be um, just a good, good, good place to start. But then as you're talking to planners and as you now collaborate with what you would normally look at as a supplier that is your straight competitor, you're working with them and saying, hey, what, what can we do to to work together and, and to give our clients, you know, the end result is your client and the experience that they have. So how can we work together and um, come up with something amazing? And I think something that, you know, with us going virtual that a lot mm -hmm. of people are forgetting about is the F and B side. I think that, yes. you know, some people are forgetting how we can be using also our local caterers on sourcing locally into that area and having them door drop so eloquently or shipping. And right. you know, um, let's not forget that side of our industry. They have always been there for us through everything and all our crazy menu requests and dietary restrictions. <laughs> and, you know, I am one to push their limits. So, you know, let's not forget them. Let's, you know, I'm all about also due to budget if it needs to be a Grubhub gift card that's still helping local restaurants right. and stuff. But let's, you know, for your higher up events, you know, sending wine baskets and, you know, let's, you know, rehab those conversations and talk to them. They might have plans in place already for some people I've spoken to, ready to ready to integrate to your event more than you already know. And, you know, that's really also stepping up your client's game on what is their attendees expecting. You know, um, some people, you know, having amazing boxes shipped and then a dinner delivered to them is, you know, what their budget and expectation of a usual event is. And, you know, keeping that standard, you know, we shouldn't have to step our standards down because we went virtual and bringing in, you know, and then, you know, that goes to say for a lot of our partners, you know, we still might need to use a hotel in Florida to create an amazing studio set so that, you know, it is really showcasing so truly, you know, so that, you know, we are creating that stage for that event. Definitely. And you, I mean, you brought up a good point. You know, this is something that I did in the beginning when, when everything was happening is just pick up the phone or, or, you know, get on an email and say, Hey, which vendor have I not talked to? Um, do I need a demo? Like request demos from your software companies that you're hearing about, you know, get, a, get, jump on a call with your caterer that you used to work with all the time and say, Hey, what are you doing? And then, you know, obviously we, as planners, we like to document. So start a spreadsheet and start putting in there, you know, what these vendors are offering in this virtual landscape. And then from there, you can look at it and say, okay, well, I'm going to choose this vendor for that and this vendor for this client. Um, that's something that I did. And it works really, really well in, in this new, you know, virtual 
land that we live in. <laughs> yeah, and definitely, you know, to concur on that, one of the cool things that we've done, and I will definitely send Jackie the link to drop, is um, we've actually built out in our Salesforce system a whole vendor side to get into our vendor's database. And Amazing. You know, very self-service to update yourself and to keep us in the loop of what you're doing. And, you know, I think that, you know, coming strong out of this, everyone, is to be able to understand what new skill, what new service, what, you know, how are you surviving? And, you know, maybe you are an actual vendor in a different way and maybe you need to come on as event support staff to help you know us as event planners because we're short staff for an event virtually right that, you know this is truly a time to you know change it up and to be more on the same team and i think that you know moving forward will truly help us in the end because you know a tip or trick can be the next thing of closing your next deal Tip or trick, hey, get it here. Get your industry trends here. <laughs> um, yeah, as as we close up, um, I'd love to share some of the, the, the information that we've had. Um, we'll share our resource guide with you guys. Um, Mark, if you can share your, your, your vendor resource guide as well, where, you know, you're keeping up with the information. And then, um, you also mentioned in the beginning of the conversation about your, um, your, your COVID education. I would love to know, um, and, and kind of be on the know of what your, what classes you're taking. And then maybe we'll just keep everybody updated as the month goes and as, as you Absolutely. find out. Training. So one of the coolest places to definitely check out is MC Event Consulting Launch, Keeping Up With The Events, is our new okay. podcast. Um, you can find it on Spotify, Apple App Store, Google Play. Um, it is a really fun channel. We're bringing on all different people. Um, and I can give you a sneak peek that Jackie is our next guest. Um, and, you know, we are literally looking to kick back and have some fun, talk about, you know, what's working, what's not working. Um, and also, you know, how we're moving forward. Um, so definitely check that out. I'm still happy, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, ask all my certifications are on LinkedIn for every, all the hundreds of classes I've taken, um, but I'm happy to also compile a list and provide to Northwest event show on, you know, what the best classes were, the best partners and, you know, moving education forward. Education to me is literally so critical in this time of, you know, showing your clients you care and how to move forward is something I think that they'll get enlightenment from that, you know, you have this new book of tricks and also, you know, value yourself with that. As you improve in your own education, you know, you need to rectify that in your rates and prices um, by taking that effort. Definitely. I, I agree. And as you elevate and, you know, we were talking about uh, the morality, the, the morality would be that you are completely educated as you go into if you are recommending live events to your clients make sure you are getting that education because you don't just want to um you know just just throw a live event because you you your client wants you to so make sure you guys get educated make sure you stay informed and make sure to tune in next month when we'll bring in somebody from the fmb and talk a little bit more about that so Jackie, we have one last thing to surprise the audience with today. Yes. Um, so MC Event Consulting will be hosting an open house to check out our avatar system. You can create your own avatar, interact with amazing companies like Northwest Event Show um, in a virtual atmosphere. And we are inviting you guys to all come join as Northwest Event Show's guests. Stay tuned for Northwest Event Show dropping links to register. The event is going to be February 25th. Um, and we are so excited to be inviting you guys all to come join as MC Event Consulting's open house, where we show you guys what we've been doing the last few months. We're going to be having an amazing DJ perform and really show you how we can take your event virtual while we can't meet in person. Yes, I love it. Tune in, guys. We'll drop in all the links um, uh, following this session. And we'll, yeah, we'll see you on the flip side. If you guys have any other further questions, you guys can drop them in now. If not, me and Jackie look forward to seeing you next month. Bye. Thank you, guys.